Iraqis went to the polls this month to elect parliamentarians who will then choose the prime minister. The stakes are high for the Obama administration in terms of the stated goal of a troop withdrawal by the end of 2011. We're here today with Ambassador Hamid Al-Bayati. I'm Pamela Falk for CBS News. Ambassador Al-Bayati, what is a measure of success? 62% of Iraqis went to the polls. Do you believe this was a successful poll, although there was, in fact, violence? Well, the major point that the violence was much less than previous elections and much less than expected. In actual fact, uh, both uh, ambassador, U.S. ambassador to uh, Iraq, Christopher Hill, said the election went uh, smoothly and orderly. And General Oderno challenged those who said that the election was marred with violence by saying only three stations in northern uh, province of Nainawa were closed for 15 minutes out of 50,000 stations. So I think security was really good. And the turnout's not bad comparing with the United States, United Kingdom, and the rest of the world. Well, in fact, it's higher election turnout than in most of the world. Uh, in, it, the bottom line for Americans is whether or not the um, U.S. troops will be able to pull out majority by September and all of them except for advisors by the end of 2011. Do you think American troops will be able to withdraw? Yes, I'm sure now the American troops will be able to withdraw with uh, happiness, with <laughs> celebration. They will be jubilant because they did a great job. They have victory in Iraq. They removed Saddam regime and they helped to build democracy, human rights, rule of law, women's rights, and that's the most important issue. Well, right now there are not election results and even preliminary results which will be coming out will take a few days the final results and then of course putting together a coalition will take some time do you believe that all the different ethnic and sectarian groups in iraq the sunnis the shias kurdish tribal groups have all been included and really saw this election as inclusive pamela iraqis never fail to agree this is very important although in democracy you have different point of view. And this is all democracy about. We don't want the rule of one man as Saddam did or the rule of one party like the Ba'ath Party. We have different um, ethnic, sectarian, and religious groups. And they are competing through ballot boxes rather than bullet boxes. You know, I think Iraqis mm. now learned how to shout at rather than to shoot at each mm. other. This is the real democracy. However, I don't think they will fail to agree being Kurds, Arabs, Turkomans, Christians, Sunnis, Shiite. So um, in the end of the day, we will have some kind of national unity government as we did in the past. Now, uh, there, regardless of the fact that the final results are not out, there appears to be quite a few victory celebrations and at least statements of victory. The current prime minister, Nouri al-Maliki, has said that he has garnered enough votes to choose the next prime minister, and he's looking for a second term, as well as the Iraqiya party has said that the former prime minister, Ayad Alawi, uh, has garnered enough votes to do the same. It does appear that no one can get a majority, or at least for, to the outside, of the 325 votes. Um, how do you think this is going to play out? A lot of people feel that that's where the fighting will begin. The bloc of uh, Prime Minister Nur al-Maliki will have the largest number of seats in the parliament, no doubt about that. The second could be um, the Iraqi National Alliance, and uh, the bloc of Dr. Adalawi could be the third. However, even with the largest number of seats, the Prime Minister need coalition with other uh, blocs in order to have the th two-third majority to approve the government. All right. Now, if that two-thirds, if the majority comes together with, let's say, one of the major parties and the Kurdish vote, which may be up to 60 uh, votes, uh, people seem to be speculating anyway, um, does, does that exclude other parties? And also, does it exclude the Sunni vote? There was, of course, the debathification exclusion of, at least, of almost 500 candidates in the very beginning. The al-Maliki government did put in these 20,000 soldiers into the Iraqi army as part of a compromise. But do you think Sunni vote will feel excluded in these uh, coalitions that are put together? The Sunnis will never be excluded from any government. 
for the basic reason that they are now everywhere. The Sunnis are with Nur al-Maliki bloc, they are with the Iraqi National Alliance bloc, they are with Ayad al-Lawi. So uh, this is a different election than 2005. And I can say proudly that this is evolving democracy in Iraq. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a few examples quickly. In, in 2005, we have a closed list uh, policy, which means the uh, voters select a, a political group or party and the party will select the representative of the parliament. Now the Iraqis select individuals, as I did in Washington when I went to Washington, select individuals from their province. It used to be the whole of Iraq as one um, electoral mm -hmm. circle, now each province is electoral circle. So if somebody born in Baghdad, as I did, I have to vote for a representative in Baghdad. So this is better than before. And the new important issue that blogs are not based on ethnic, sectarian, or religious basis. It's a mix. This is why Sunnis are everywhere, and they've never been excluded. All right. Now, the Iraq Supreme Islamic Council is probably second or third in the weight of elections, it's, or so it seems. And that includes the Moqtadar al-Sadr, otherwise known as Sadrists. Do you think that they are ready to put down the, the guns? In other words, there were paramilitary militias that were supported to fight the, the Sunnis during many years. Will they put down their guns uh, regardless of how much they control in this new a new, uh, at least the election of the new prime minister? The policy of the government in the last four years was that arms should be only in the hands of the government, mm -hmm. in the hands of Iraqi security forces. Um, when Nur al-Maliki fought al-Mahdi army in Basra, in Baghdad, in Ba'aqub, Diyal, and even in Amara, they put down their arms. Now the Sadri group, Sadrist group, or Sadr current, they are a political group, and they used to be part of the parliament. And they fought the Americans, they fought the Iraqi government. We have to contain them in the political process, rather than to have them holding arms against the Iraqi government or the Americans. And now they are part of the political process. And uh, Muqtada Sadr himself uh, decided to freeze uh, the Mahdi army for some time, and now it's, it's been freeze forever, so there will be no militias anymore in Iraq. And he's in exile right now. Does he come back? I don't know. It's up to him, but he's in exile, but he is still, um, you know, controlling his group, and he was um, um, having press conferences recently about right. the elections. He had some statement, but I think to contain them in the political process, this is the only solution. Otherwise, to find them, they will take us nowhere. And would your guess be that he would come back and become part of a political process in, after the election, after the prime minister is chosen? We're going to see what the results of the election um, are mm -hmm. going to be, and then every political group and party, including Musa, will decide their future. But as I said, Iraqi National um, Alliance, including some Sunnis like Sheikh Hamid al Hayes, who is from Awakening Council in Ambar and Ramadi, mm -hmm. and some other Sunnis, there is Khalid al Mullah, who is a real scholar, Sunni mm -hmm. real scholars from Basra. So um, the alliance and other blocs having Sunnis, Shiite, all kind of mixed people, which is better situation than 2005. All right. Now, uh, Americans tend to put things in boxes, and there's almost always when that bloc, the Islamic uh, Council of Iraq, and the Sadrists are characterized, it's called the pro-Iran. Is that what, in fact, they are, is pro-Iran, and is there a, a fear of the, uh, at least that sector of Shiite Iraq, becoming much closer to Iran, particularly as U.S. troops leave? Well, in general, the government is accused of being a pro-Iran, which is mm -hmm. untrue. Actually, the Iraqi government play an important role in organizing meetings between United States administration and Iranian government in Baghdad about Iraq. And that helped very much with improving security in Iraq. Without those meetings, there were three meetings, and um, they, they, they were supposed to have a fourth meeting, which didn't happen. But those meetings helped improve security in Iraq. 
Um, and um, I think we have good relation with Iran and the United States at the same time. This is a good sign that we are independent. If we are American agent, we would be against Iran. If we have relation, a special relation with Iran, we would be against America. We, are, we believe that we should have good relation with all neighboring countries, with the whole world, because we suffer from Saddam's policies of having wars against mm -hmm. neighboring countries and challenging the whole world and the international community. Well, interestingly, I found a quote from you on from 2000, and of course that's before the invasion, the U.S. invasion. But um, the the comment was that that Iraqis felt somewhat betrayed by the United States support of Saddam Hussein. Obviously, that changed, and over time, and that the United States shouldn't worry as much about Iran. Has the United States sort of made amends? Do you think as the United States withdraws, there's a good feeling about the United States in most sectors, in some sectors, in, in Iraq generally? I think Iraqi people will never forget how the American helped Iraqis to get rid of Saddam regime. This was a dream for over 30 years to get rid of the most brutal dictatorship in the history. And now with the freedom, with democracy, and hopefully soon with of uh, economic prosperity, I think the Iraqi people feel that the best friendly nation in the world is the United States. Um, therefore, I believe that uh, history is history, and we were always meeting the United States officials in the 90s. We were reminding them of letting down the Iraqi people in 1991 during the uprising. And I had some officials like Martin Indig and the Secretary of State mm. who said, we are sorry, but we are not apologizing, which is a diplomatic way of saying sorry to the Iraqi people. But now history has changed, and I think the American did a great job. It's a noble mission to help a nation to get rid of dictatorship and to build democracy. And by the way, the situation in Iraq is affecting the region. We see for the first time uh, women were allowed to vote and being elected in Kuwait. I mean, we, positively. Uh, yeah, positively. We, in our constitution, 25% of our parliament members are women. How many countries in the world? Mm -hmm. Anybody can yes, think with 25%. In Egypt now, they are considering special quota for women. In Saudi Arabia, there was some kind of uh, municipal elections. So there is some improvement, peaceful ways of spreading democracy in the region. And so who are the spoilers? We still see bombs. We still see a uh, difficult uh, environment in, in Baghdad, in Fallujah, in Anbar province. Wh who's doing all this? Well, Al-Qaeda was the major tourist group in Iraq. And mm -hmm. Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, the leader of Al-Qaeda in Iraq, right. wrote to Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda in the world, that if the Iraqi government gets stronger and controls the situation, we will have no option but to pack and leave as we did in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And the only solution, as Abu Musab al-Zarqawi put it, is to bring sectarian war between the Shiites and the Sunnis. This is why in, in 2006, Iraq was on the verge of a full-scale sectarian war when they attacked the whole shrine in Samarra. And then some Shiite ignorant and extreme people start to attack Sunni mosque and Sunni people. But now the situation is completely different. In the last election, only some kind of small bombs, you know, even sound bombs went off. But few casualties, it's much better than two years, three years ago. But soon the Iraqi government will focus on services, reconstruction, and I think we have a bright future in Iraq. This is good That's news. That's wonderful news. Now, your, your feeling is that all sides will feel they have the nose in the tent, as the expression goes, as part of the Iraqi political process? Definitely. I think all the components of the Iraqi people will be part of the government. However, uh, in democracy, you have people in government, you have people in opposition. This is very obvious. And we were going to see some people who are not in the government being opposing the government, which is a healthy phenomenon because they can criticize the government. The government will feel they are under pressure. Uh, they are under scrutiny mm -hmm. by opposition, etc., etc. Now, almost the end, uh, last questions, because you've covered a lot of ground. But this was the first election that I had seen where there was so much internet. There was social networking site. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, Al Maliki's uh, government had a, a, a Facebook page. This ha seems to have changed the view. There were 6,000 candidates. This made people who were worried about going out on the street know what the candidates meant. Is, is it that widespread? Americans are not aware at all that it's so widespread, the use of the Internet, particularly in politics, but in Iraq. 
I have to say that during Saddam regime, no internet was allowed, no satellite TV was uh, allowed in the country, and no cell phones. So we were out of date mm -hmm. in Iraq. After 2003, the first three companies with cell phones and then the internet and then the satellite was um, allowed and every almost every house mm -hmm. now have satellite and cell phone and internet. This is why using the internet, even the cell phones, the candidate use cell phones to send messages to voters mm -hmm. and that's a great achievement. And so it's really revolutionized politics in, Ira in Iraq. I think it's a revolution in Iraq and many countries in the region, have you right. noticed, uh, uh, as you notice, you know, in recent events in, in many countries in the region. All right, so final question is now when American troops do leave, and mm -hmm. that is slated for September the majority and the end of 2000, uh, 2011 for the vast majority with some advisors left behind. Will the Iraqi forces be able to protect the country nationally, and will there be more violence once the U.S. troops leave that the Iraqi force will have to deal with? The Iraqi forces will be able to maintain security. We still need to rearm our um, army to protect Iraq from mm -hmm. any danger because we still need heavy weapons like, you know, tanks and airplanes. We have some, but not um, as much as we need. Um, terrorists will continue. They are everywhere. They, you know, they try to strike in, in the Middle East, in the Far mm -hmm. East, even in the West. But the Iraqi government having plans to counter tourism, and I think we will manage to control the situation well after the withdrawal of U.S. forces. Mm -hmm. And do you, what's your timetable? I mean, what is your guess at when the next prime minister, there's an assumption that it will take a little bit of time to get the, the vote together. I hope that it didn't take as long as it, it took us right. in the last government. Uh, we had the election in de December and we had until June, then we have the government. Hopefully with the experience we have through negotiation, the government will be uh, set up sooner than, than last time. Than the last time, maybe in a few months rather than I hope so. A couple a of months I think will be enough. They already started negotiation mm -hmm. and I think certain groups are already agreed on the future government but we need to wait for the results of the election and then serious negotiation will start and hopefully as i said a couple of months will be um, enough to have a, a new government well thank you very much we've covered a lot of ground i hope you come back when there is a new prime minister and we can talk about that i'm um, pamela Falk for cbs news thank you to ambassador thank al bayati thank you